Well, welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation. This is the update, guys. Uh, we've got a few stories to discuss today, Sunday, the uh, 9th of June. Yes, we're going to talk a little bit of how Liam Kelly has signed a new contract with Motherwell. But this is not what you think it is before without headline. Uh, John Suter obviously dumped unceremoniously by Scotland. Why this could be a good thing for Rangers. Um, from a number of aspects and obviously as well a little bit about Sam Lammers and well two bits about Sam Lammers actually number one how the fact that Utrecht can't afford his wages could actually result in an increased transfer windfall for Rangers and also the fact that we could end up facing him in the Champions League well that would be pretty amazing I think you know and knowing our luck he'll probably score against us well let's start off with some news about Liam Kelly obviously who is in the Scotland squad for the Euro Ch European Championships in Germany um, what do we know about Liam Kelly? Well, Liam Kelly obviously is out of contract as a Motherwell player. He uh, was obviously the starting goalkeeper at Motherwell and there has been a, you know, an amount of debate over the fact that perhaps he's not at the stage of his career yet where he's ready to become the number two. Now, we don't obviously know what the goalkeeping situation at Rangers is going to be next season. There is still, as I mentioned on that video a few weeks ago, a few days ago, whatever it was, I can't remember. Um, you know, there is an uncertainty there. You know, Jack Butland might not be here. It depends if an English Premier League comes in, comes in with a bumper bid. And now, while Jack may not want to, to move on because he loves life at Rangers, um, the board may well consider £15, £20 million pounds if that's the bid that comes in. Now, what's happening with Liam Kelly? That's the question. Well, apparently Liam Kelly has signed a new short-term contract with Motherwell, uh, which came as a bit out of left field. Field. Now, apparently there is a motive for Kelly signing this short-term contract, uh, but even though he has signed this short-term contract after the European Championships, he is likely to then sign with Rangers. So, what's going on? What's the story, Morning Glory, as Oasis once sang? Well, it is apparently the fact that when he is away on European duty with Scotland at the Euros, he will uh, his club will receive a six-figure fee from UEFA for this tournament. Therefore, uh, Kelly, being a good servant to his club, uh, to Motherwell, has decided that he would like that fee to go to Motherwell. Now, at the moment, because he's out of contract, uh, that fee wouldn't really go anywhere. If he joined Rangers, it would come to us, obviously, which would be useful. Uh, but, you know, he's decided that he wants to, to sign a short-term contract, which will run throughout the Euros, apparently, that it will end at the end of the European Championships. Um, be interested to see what the end date on that contract is, whether they're expecting Scotland to make the European Championship final or whether it's at the end of the group stage. Who knows? Uh, but apparently uh, Kelly has signed this short term contract to ensure that Motherwell get that six figure payout. Now, you can look at this one of two ways, I suppose. You can look at the fact that, well, you know what, if he's going to become a Rangers player, that fee should be coming to us. But, you know, you can look at another way. He's been a loyal servant to them he's you know played for them for a number of seasons now they've paid his wages regularly they promoted him to captain they placed a lot of trust in him so i guess it's kind of a way of him repaying that trust that motherwell have shown in him um and that trust that motherwell gave him and, and giving motherwell something back for the service that you know that they've allowed him to do and the service that he's given to the club you know maybe that's part of it you know maybe he feels a bit guilty obviously that his contract's run down and that motherwell are not going to get a transfer fee for him uh now he's moving on but uh an interesting one isn't it i'd love to know what your thoughts are on this you know personally i think this shows what a decent guy he is i think you know it does show that he's a top top guy you know that he's obviously thinking of his former club we know that motherwell obviously don't have the financial clout or the financial income that the the that Celtic and Rangers have, um, or even you know some of the even the two Edinburgh clubs to some degree. So you know it is um, deeply decent of Kelly to sign this short-term contract. Uh, however, like I said, as soon as that contract runs out at the end of the Euros, it is still expected that he will sign on the dotted line as a Rangers player, uh, likely of course to be the backup to Jack Butland. Fingers crossed. Let's hope so because. I don't want Jack going anywhere. I want Jack staying at the club because he is too valuable an asset to lose. Anyway, we'll talk obviously about Sam Lammers and how we could get a bigger transfer fee and how we could face him in the Champions League qualifiers shortly. But before that, let's talk a little bit about our player, John Suter. Now, John Suter obviously was unceremoniously dumped from the European Championship squad by Scotland manager Steve Clark. Um Interesting, isn't it, as well, that Ryan and Jack has played, you know, the last two games for Scotland. Seems fit enough to play for Scotland, but wasn't fit enough to turn out for Rangers. Well, surprise, surprise. But 
Anyway, we'll get on to the Jack thing in a minute because there is an interesting aside about Ryan Jack. Anyway, John Suter unceremoniously obviously cut from the Scotland squad. Um, you know, it may be over fitness concerns. Obviously, John has been out injured, apparently. I still think there's something more to that, you know, with the whole John Lundstrom story. I don't know if there's any truth in the fact that he decked Lundstrom, but, you know, I kind of hope he did. Um, but, you know, apparently he has been injured, so fair enough. Um, let's face it, you know, before this season, you know, uh, to some extent last season, Suter did have a bit of a record of, of injury problems. Um, so it could well be the truth that he, he is actually has been injured and he's lacking match sharpness and match fitness. Uh, but what is interesting was that when Steve Clark talked of the two players that he was cutting, uh, Craig Gordon and John Suter, he spent a good amount of time waxing lyrical about the Hearts 41 year old goalkeeper, Craig Gordon, how emotionally was, what a difficult decision it was and praising Gordon and etc etc whereas when it came to explaining the decision of John Souter being left out of the Scotland squad it was mainly put down to well I'm well covered with that position and he was just unlucky to miss out and that was pretty much it what he said that was paraphrasing that's not the exact words um interesting isn't it I suppose you know that you can spend eight hours waxing lyrical past an hour but you know I mean minutes like waxing lyrical about a hearts player but when it comes to a Rangers player uh we all know that they're not the most popular within the Scottish national team setup or amongst the Tartan army, uh, whatever they want to, or whatever name you want to call them. So look, it is what it is. Now, how could this, this could, like I said, this could be a good thing for Rangers that Suter has been cut. Now, obviously Suter is going to be desperately disappointed. I understand that, you know, it obviously does mean something to him to represent his country and fair enough to him, you know, um, you know, personally, like I said, I think your first loyalty should be to your club team because that's who pays your wages. And let's face it, Rangers are by far more important than Scotland. So, that's just what it is. But at the end of the day, it could be a good thing for Rangers. Now, number two things, two reasons why it could really be a positive reason for Rangers going forward into next season. Number one, obviously, is the fact that Suter now will return to Glasgow. He obviously has some time off and then he'll return to uh, pre-season training and obviously to Ock and Howie. Um, the end of June uh, to do his testing and everything else. So he'll be with Rangers, you know, for the full pre-season. He, you know, he'll be straight back to the club. We can monitor him, obviously, and make sure his fitness levels are good, make sure there's no recurrence of any injuries, and obviously ensure that he is, um, you know, has a good long rest. And, you know, the fact that he's going to come out of this rested, no risk of an injury, is very positive for the club. You know, yes, we do need some new centre-backs. I have you know, I do agree, do agree that we do need to bring in a couple of new centre backs, but I do think John Suter has a part to play in the squad, and I think he gets a lot of unfair criticism at times uh, from the supporters. Um, you know, he's he's a right sided centre back who's been mostly used on the left hand side, and I think a lot of people miss uh, under so underestimate even not miss underestimate that's a George Bushism underestimate even. Um, you know what it is. It, to be moved out of, and kind of out of your natural comfort zone in terms of how you're used to playing the ball and how you're used to dealing with the ball, how you're used to the ball coming at you and players coming at you. And because you're not naturally left footed, you'll check back onto your right a lot. And obviously that slows down the way to use the ball. So I think, you know, there's, there's that in him. Yes, he does have a mistake in him. But you know what? If he didn't have a mistake in him, I think he'd be playing in the EPL, um, you know, top level, uh, top 10 clubs there. So look, he is... You know, for me, he's a good defender. You know, yes, he's not world class. Yes, he's not, you know, probably the best defender in Scotland. But for me, he is a decent defender. Um, and I think, you know, like I said, he gets a lot of unfair criticism. And I think if he's used on the right hand side of the defence, he looks a lot more solid. So, you know, I do think that Big Soapy gets a, gets a fair unfair crack of the whip at times. You know, he, for me, at times last season was probably our best defender alongside well, Big Leon, obviously. I absolutely love Big Leon. Uh, you know, he brings the ball out from the back well. He, he he uses the ball very well. His passing breaks lines. He's willing to put his body on the line to block. His tackling's fairly good. His heading is fairly decent. You know, he is he's a good defender. And, you know, I think that, you know, that that's obviously a positive. Now, the other thing, of course, that could make this a good thing for Rangers is he could use that disappointment, harness that disappointment to really push on and show what he can achieve and show Steve Clark that he was completely wrong to leave him out of the squad and squad, that he left out his best defender, that he shouldn't have done it. And, you know, he may use that disappointment as, as a fuel to push him on to a new level. I mean, it might not happen, but you never know. Hey, it's a possibility, isn't it? So, look, there we go. Reasons why, to, reasons to be cheerful, reasons to be positive for John Suter, even though he's been left out of the Scotland squad. So, reasons positive for John Suter, reasons to be cheerful for Rangers. Is that a song? Reasons to be cheerful? Five, four, three. I'm not going to sing.
Anyway, let's move it on now and talk a little bit about the Dutch misfit himself, Mr. Sam Lammers or Slammers or whatever, or, or Fashion Lammers, whatever you want to call him. Um, well, that's an insult to fashion. I did like your wee fashion. Um, anyway, let's talk a bit Sam Lammers. So Sam Lammers was, I think we can all agree, an absolute, complete and utter disaster of the club last season. Yes, pre-season, he looked impressive when the pressure wasn't on, but the moment the pressure came on, he kind of collapsed, died and looked very poor. He obviously went on loan to FC Utrecht in Holland and suddenly became a new player. He suddenly became Marco van Basten all of a sudden. Well, perhaps not that good, but you know what I mean. Uh, very impressive stats out in Holland for FC Utrecht. FC Utrecht at the time were in pretty bad uh, trouble down at the bottom of the league, but I think ended up finishing uh, seventh thanks to the goal, uh, goals of Slammers himself. He scored 11 goals in 20 games, three assists. That's 14 goal contributions in 20 games. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, I think one thing we need to consider, guys, here is if you were signing a striker now, let's say Rangers were going after a striker from the area divisi who had scored 11 goals in 20, 14 goal contributions in 20, you'd be looking at, what, six, seven, eight million pounds for the player. I think, you know, realistically, uh, coming from a club like Utrecht, obviously, if you're coming from a club like Feyenoord or PSV or, or Ajax, you'd be looking at a much, much bigger fee than that. But, you know, there's no reason why we can't expect to even make a profit. Yes, Knock me down with a feather. Yes, let's all faint and fall back in our chairs. We could end up making a profit on Sam Lammers. After all, we were all talking when he first went on loan to FC Utrecht. Man will take a Mars bar, pack a Revels and a Red Bull for him. Now, or if we make a fiver back on him, brilliant. You know, or we get a million quid, if we're looking optimistically, we've done really well. Even the fact we paid three and a half, four million pounds, whatever it was in the end for him with all the on fees, non costs. So, look, we could even make our money back and more on this transfer deal. Now, why is that a possibility? I hear you ask. Well, the possibility is there because of the fact, obviously, that Sam Lammers has really impressed in the Dutch Eredivisie. And it's like I've said, you know, in, in a previous video when I talked about Lammers and people talk about, well, possibly bringing Lammers back to, um, to Scotland. Look, it's not going to work. And the reasons it's not going to work is because of the fact that Lammers succeeded in Holland. You've just got to look at his stats, you know, with Herenveen, with PSV, he did well with Atlanta, Eintracht Frankfurt, with, with Rangers, with Sampdoria. He was shocking. Um, he, you know, like and like I said in that video that I did a, did a few few weeks ago, you know, some players are just destined to, to play only in their own domestic league and be as successful in their own domestic league. Now, according to reports in Holland, FC Utrecht are unable to match Sam Lammer's wage demands. So, yes, Sam Lammer's wage demands, which apparently he's on quite a decent contract at Ibrox. So it is a possibility that one of the top Dutch clubs at this moment in time could come in for him and sign him. Uh, according to reports in Holland, FC Twente are interested in securing the services of Big Sam. Um, Sam Lammers is seen as someone that, that would, could supplement their Champions League campaign that they're hoping could reproduce the form that he showed at Utrecht at Twente. Now, Twente are obviously in the Champions League next season. And guess what? They're in the qualifiers and they are unseeded. And guess who is in the qualifiers and seeded? Yes, that's right. Rangers are in the qualifiers and seeded. So if we could actually end up with Dutch opponents again. We could end up facing FC, FC, no, FC. I'm turning into Steve McLaren, uh, FC 20. And we could end up facing Sam Lammers again. Oh my goodness, how strange would that be to welcome Sam Lammers back to Ibrox? Uh, but in the kit of FC20 Eshende. It could be a very odd one indeed. And like I said uh, in, in the uh, initial starting, no doubt he'll probably score against us um, because that's just the way it goes. That's a very Rangersy thing to happen, isn't it? But uh, Sam Lammers, like I said, who has had a fantastic finish to his uh, time at um, Utrecht, um, his former coach at Herenveen, Keith van Wunderen, uh, spoke to the media about Sam Lammers, and in particular to, uh, to the Scottish media about Lammers um, and his ability to play in the Eredivisie. He said, what you get from him as a player is first and foremost a superb work ethic. He's a left-footed striker and good technically. He's a player who has an eye for a tactical aspect of the game. He appreciates how the game is played, where the spaces are how to deal with the circumstances on the pitch. He knows how to play an opponent and is a very clever guy. 
Uh, it appears that FC20 have taken this on board, what Keith Van Runderen has said about him, and are apparently readying a bid for him. So this could be good news for Rangers. Like I said, FC20 are a club that has money to spend, obviously, because now they're in the Champions League. Well, qualifiers. Uh, they are ready to spend to try and get into that Champions League and are ready to match his wage demands and hopefully bid a reasonable sum of money, hopefully a profit, uh, for Lammers. And I think this would be a real positive for the club. You know, any money we can raise through player sales, which can then be put back into the squad rebuild, has got to be a positive. And I think, you know, if you'd started this window out and talked, you know, back in perhaps in sort of... Um, March time, even, you know, what's the saleable assets in this club? You'd have said, well, do John Sterling and, and Jack Butland, and that's pretty much it. But it appears that Sam Lammers could become a saleable asset and someone we could actually make a profit on. Mad times, crazy times, and just proof that the world is absolutely slowly going mad. Well, guys, thank you for watching Let's Go Rangers Nation. It has been, you know what, it's fantastic. I, I love doing this, guys. I love talking to you about all things Rangers. I love talking about all the latest news. We're not going to go anywhere over the summer, guys. We'll obviously keep all over what is going on at the club because whatever it is, this, this club is massive. This club is huge. This is the biggest club in Scotland, despite what they say on the other side of the city. This is one of the biggest clubs in Europe, biggest clubs in the world. And it's a 24-7, 365-day thing, isn't it? We're, we're always on the... Uh, on the on the go, aren't we here at here at uh, Glasgow Rangers Nation and obviously at Rangers as well? Uh, fantastic, obviously as well. I think you saw the community post. We went over 1.8 million views the other day, which is unbelievable. I am absolutely blown away by that. It is just utterly phenomenal the support you've given me. Um, I love doing this, guys. Obviously, my aspirations are quite clear for the channel. I want this channel to grow. I want this to be a big channel. I want this to get even bigger. You know, you know who my hero is when it comes to Rangers YouTube. It's CJ Novo. I'd love to get up somewhere around his numbers. Maybe one day. Who knows? Well, guys, it is. Look, we've got a lot positively on this summer. It's time for a rebuild. It's time for revolution, not evolution. Thanks for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation, guys. And on the way out, please, obviously, smash the like. Defeat the evil lurking Darth algorithm. And obviously, what's the thing I ask for you? Oh, yes. Always remember, we are the people.